Our 8-bit CPU is almost done, but it still doesn't know how to follow instructions. Part of that is our fault because we haven't even defined a language for it to understand yet. We'll fix that in this video by designing our CPU's instruction set. Hello everyone, my name is Mike and you're watching Polymath Unlimited. In this series we are designing a Logisim simulation of an 8-bit CPU with the following design goals in mind. First, the CPU should be simple enough to make a physical build practical. Second, the CPU should be capable of complex operations. And third, the CPU should be easy to program. In the last video we learned about stack memory and added a stack pointer to our CPU. In this video, we will design our CPU's instruction set. This will define all of the instructions that our CPU will be capable of executing. Once this is done, the only thing left to do to complete our CPU will be to build the control unit that will tell our CPU how to execute those instructions. There are lots of different CPU instruction sets out there, but they can generally be broken down into two categories, RISC and CISC. RISC stands for Reduced Instruction Set Computer. Computers running a RISC architecture typically favor simpler instructions that execute very quickly. CISC stands for Complex Instruction Set Computer. Computers running a CISC architecture typically favor more complex instructions that do many tasks in one instruction. RISC computers typically have a dedicated memory access instructions where only those instructions can access memory. This means they also tend to have more general purpose registers to try to limit how much they need to access memory, since accessing memory on a RISC system necessarily increases code size. CISC computers typically have fewer registers, and many of their instructions handle memory access in addition to whatever other tasks the instruction is doing, so memory access is already baked in, which reduces the number of instructions needed to do certain tasks. The main trade-off that we will consider when deciding whether to build a RISC or a CISC computer is the fact that RISC programs typically take more space in RAM than CISC programs do. This is because RISC computers typically need more instructions to accomplish the same tasks than CISC computers. Since our computer will operate on a relatively small RAM space, we will need to save all the memory space we can, so we will be building a CISC computer. This also aligns well with the fact that our computer has very few registers, making it ideal for a CISC instruction set anyway. This will increase the complexity of our instruction decoding logic a bit later, but for our CPU I think the trade-off here is well worth it, since this will greatly increase the complexity of programs we can run, and it will also make it so that we don't have to build as many registers when we build this CPU later. In RAM, our machine code instructions will be organized into groups of 1, 2, or 3 bytes. The first byte will be in the instruction opcode, and the next two bytes will contain any operands or data that instruction needs. The instruction opcodes will be split into three sections. The first two bits will determine what type of instruction it is. We will have four instruction types, loads, stores, ALU operations, and branch instructions. Load and store instructions will either load a value from memory into the accumulator, or store the accumulator to a location in memory, respectively. ALU operations will perform an arithmetic or logical operation with the accumulator and some other value from memory as operands, and store the result back in the accumulator. Branch instructions will load a value into the program counter if some condition is met, effectively jumping the program to a different location in memory and resuming execution there. These instructions will be very useful when we want to make loops or when we want our programs to be able to make decisions. The next two bits of the opcode will determine what addressing mode the instruction will use for loads, stores, and ALU operations. Or it will also determine what type of branch operation we are performing for branch instructions. Addressing modes determine where our CPU loads and stores data from. We will have four addressing modes, immediate, direct, 
indirect, and stack. Immediate addressing mode means that we will give the value directly as an operand in the instruction. For example, the instruction load immediate 15 will load the value of 15 into the accumulator. Direct addressing means that the instruction operand contains the memory address that the instruction will operate on. For example, store direct 1000 will store the value of the accumulator at the memory address 1000. Indirect addressing means that the instruction operand contains a pointer to where the address for the instruction can be found. For example, store indirect 1000 means that we want to read the value in the memory location 1000, load that value into the address register, and then use that address to store the accumulator at that address. The stack addressing mode means that we will be using the stack for loads or stores. For branch instructions, there will be four different types of branch operations. Branch if, branch if not, jump to subroutine, and return from subroutine. Branch if and branch if not instructions will branch if some condition is or is not met. Jump to subroutine instructions will store the program counter on the stack, then jump. Return from subroutine instructions will load the program counter from the stack, allowing us to return where we left off after a subroutine finished executing. The last four bits of the opcode will be reserved as special clarification for certain instructions to use. For ALU operations, these bits will contain the opcode for the ALU allowing us to select between different ALU operations. For conditional branch instructions, these bits will determine the condition for the branch. Now that we have our instructions set, let's demonstrate how we might write a program for this computer. We'll write a simple Hello World program in assembly code. First, we'll define an output by memory mapping it to the address FEFF. It will be up to us to add memory mapped output later. We'll go over that in a future episode. Next, we'll make a loop. The code to read and output a string will go here. Here, the jump command will just be a special case of the conditional branch instruction using some clever conditions that will always evaluate to true. Again, we'll go over more specifics in a future video. We'll define a memory location called message and store our hello world string there and we'll also define a memory location called pointer and initialize it to hold the location of the message. Now in our loop, we'll load using the indirect addressing mode denoted by the brackets. We'll then check to see if we've reached a null terminator by adding the immediate value zero and branching to an infinite end loop if we have. Next, we'll write the character to the output and increment the pointer, and there we have it. Once our CPU is complete, we have a simple program that we can use to test to see if it's working. Unfortunately, our CPU can't run this program yet, since we still need to build the control unit to activate the different parts of our CPU in the correct sequence to execute instructions. We'll start on that in the next video. Until then, feel free to play around in Logisim and see what you can create, or maybe start thinking about what you might change about this instruction set in your own implementation. Are there any instructions you might want to add? Maybe you have some ideas on how to better map our instruction set to our 8-bit opcode size. Make sure to share your ideas in the comments. Thank you for watching, and I will see you next time.